Good morning from beautiful Brisbane, Australia, even though it's cold in spring. <laughs> Not normal for us. How are you today? Let me know how you are in the comments down below. Welcome to Friday. It's wonderful to be at Friday. We've had a week packed full of information and ideas that we can begin to focus on in our trauma recovery and we love it. Remember, take notes because you can use your notes and ideas that you have when you go to your therapist or your trauma coach and it helps you get personalized strategies for what you need today in order to continue to move forward in your recovery. Our goal is to be in remission for the rest of our lives if possible. And mm. it's doable. It just, it will take time because trauma has affected so much of us in spe specifically our brain. Um, I will get a picture up for you to show how everything is reversed for us. Now, Today we're going to do part two of recovery intentions. Now we talked yesterday, um, well, about a lot of things in regards to our recovery intentions, but we do need to be setting the intention about what we want because we need to build it into our life. And the second part is when we have the intention, we then set our why. Why are we going to do this? We need to know within ourselves what we want out of the process. Uh, so if I look back eight years ago, my why was, I want to be well. I want to live a whole life. I want to be able to talk again. I want to be able to walk again. I want to be able to do things around the home that I obviously couldn't do. And I wanted to get back to you know, being a mum to my kids and so on and so on and so on but my daily why so that was like the big picture but my daily why was that I really wanted to be well that motivated me a hundredfold because a lot of the other things were in the bigger picture and I didn't know how long it would take me to get well I was just focused on the fact that I needed to be well my apologies <laughs> it's um interesting weather here now, if you're here for the first time, welcome. It's great to have you with me. If you're here in the replay, do a hashtag replay. And where are we all from? I love saying hello and I love working globally. Uh, we get to know each other through each other's different cultures as well. Now, if I can just find a list for the today because it was... Oh, I know I've got it here and... Um, Oh, I know what it's done. It's slipped into the list. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Now, so if you've not heard of Pete Walker, he's one of the people that are at the forefront of complex PTSD, and he wrote this wonderful, wonderful book. Okay, so can you see that? Yeah, complex PTSD from surviving to thriving. And as you, you can work through the book wherever you're up to in recovery. Plus, you can go back in and like get lists, get information. He phrases a bit differently to that, but for the sake of the video, I've made it succinct. Uh, it goes from the overall points to the finer points to relationships to the stages of recovery, and so much more. It's a good place to start to get practical information on recovering from PTSD. And it's in the practical that our brain feels safe. It puts an order around recovery for us, and we need that. We need the order not just for to feel safe, that's primary, because we don't want to be triggered, Okay, and it also goes through how to work through emotional triggers and triggers. But we also want to be able to be able to see where it's going, where we're, we're being led, what the path's going to look like. Because we've never experienced what we would call a normal trajectory in life. Okay, so I just want to go through, these are normal and safe wants to wish and hope for to go to cultivate a really healthy mind, body, and spirit, and our emotional energy as well. All right. 
So I want to increase my capacity to play and have fun. And if you've got complex PTSD similar to mine, you'll understand why we have to make this one of our intentions. Because sometimes we get so wrapped up in trying to be, well, I know for me, get so wrapped up in trying to be well, I forget to have fun and play each day. So I like to have this as one of my intentions. Just choose one this week, okay? I want to make plenty of room for beauty and nature in my life. I want sufficient physical and monetary resources. I want a fair amount of help, self, human or divine, that's supposed to say divine, sorry, to get what I need. I want God's love, grace and blessing. I want a balance of work, rest and play. So it can't be all go, 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 which is what I found I did a lot of because then I'm trying to have control of everything in my external world in order that I feel safe, okay? And feeling safe is one of the things our brain wants, but it is the predominant thing that our brain wants, all right? I want a balance of stability and change, and that helps us with feeling safe. I, and I want you to use these words in and around your home too. So not just with your spouse, your partner, but with your family of origin, with your children, with anyone, with your carers, with anyone that comes into your sphere, start to practice saying, this is what I want. We want to get the breath out of you to get stale breath out of you to get fresh breath in, okay? I want a balance of loving interaction and healthy self-sufficiency. So no more trying to do everything on your own. Yeah, I gotcha, because I've done that too. <laughs> um, it's okay to ask for help. And more importantly, it's okay to say, I'm not coping with this at the moment. We're at a women's retreat on the weekend. And Friday night I went there and, you know, my brain is trying to map the whole area, but I didn't know where I was. I'd never been there before. So even though I know who I am and I'm comfortable where I am, my brain's triggered. So I've got perspiration pouring off me, but that was okay because the people I was with, I was able to say, look, this is what's happening. I am okay. I feel okay, but my brain is reacting. But the next morning, because um, because I lost all my cognitive function, it's rebuilding it again. So by the time I got to the next morning, we'd had dinner in a cafe style with lots of women, not just the women I was on retreat with. So the noise, okay, so think of our senses being overwhelmed with a new environment, new noises, etc., etc. So, of course, when I crawled into bed, I just crashed, overtired. But when I woke up the next morning, my, I could literally feel how wired my brain was because I wasn't in my bed, all right? This is how we get used to being at home and in our comfort zone and then how we move outside that comfort zone and still feel safe. So what I did when I went down, so then breakfast in the cafe style arena, and then when I went down to the first um what do you call it, activity of the morning. So the night before, I'd actually got up on stage with a group of other women, and whilst I felt good and was having fun, my brain's obviously freaking out. So it's my brain is exhausted for trying to keep up with who I am and what I want to do. So the next morning, I could literally feel so, so fragile. And one of my friends was the leader that morning for the activities, and I said to her, look, I'm really sorry, I just need to sit here and let my brain process all the information about what's going on, who's here, etc., etc. And I actually had tears coming down my face because it's not normal for me to say this is how I'm feeling, you know, I'm feeling really vulnerable at the moment, all right? So we build ourselves up so that we know who I am and then we're able to say to other people, listen, my brain's not quite on track at the moment, all right? 
So that builds us into a balance of loving interaction and healthy self-sufficiency. We're taking responsibility for what we need at any given point in time. I want a full emotional expression with a balance of laughter and tears. And believe me, we were laughing our heads off that day as well. The activities we did were just hilarious. Uh, I want sexual satisfaction. And look, we need to be able to talk about what that means for us. All right. And if you've come from a childhood where you have been sexually abused, there's a whole realm of information that you need to learn f from what it really did to us to what a healthy sexual relationship looks like, okay? Don't be afraid of it and just take your time. I want to find effective and non-abusive ways to deal with anger and I want all of this for each and every other being. As we go through our day and we're able to engage our heart in kindness, not just for others but for ourselves because we're usually very good at doing it for others, you'll find that you build more into yourself. Uh, for decades now, it's all, always been a case of learn to love yourself, but that's never felt like something that I related to. But what we can do is learn to have compassion for ourselves because we've come through so much okay in our childhood and now as we build compassion into ourselves it opens up our hearts literally to more vulnerability vulnerability but in doing so we become braver and safer in the external world as well as our internal world now, as it's Friday, have a fantastic weekend. As I said, we've done heaps of work this week. Rest on the weekend, do something you enjoy, take something from the list and build it into your soul. So we do that through the experience of doing it. And may you just rest, relax, restore and rejuvenate, ready for next week and take it one step at a time. I know you can do this. Okay. Bye for now.